Claire. All right, you've got concrete column that's reinforced using rebar. There's four rods of rebar. Each have a diameter, each of those rods of rebar have a diameter of 18 millimeters to determine the stress in the concrete and the stress in the steel if the column is subjected to an axial load of 800 kilonewtons. All right, so from statics. Uh, I would say that the, that that, that uh, it tells me that late load eight hundred kilonewtons. Um, that is, you know, some of that goes to the concrete, some of that goes to the rebar. <laughs> we could kind of draw like a free body diagram, uh, but I think the force in the steel rebar we're calling is made of steel, and the force in the concrete will add up to that 800. And I'm gonna do 800,000 so that I'm in Newtons. Some of the moments doesn't help me out, but some of the moments just tells me that the force in those steel are all equal due to symmetry. Okay, now there's two different ways to do this though. Uh, I, all four, together. I, I just grouped all four of those rebar together and said there's one force of all four of those. Your other option is to think about them separately. And so maybe I'll write in pink. I wouldn't write this. And I, I don't want to confuse you more, but you could have said four treated them individually concrete equals 800,000. And so you, you would have been doing separate. And that's okay, just later on, you would have to remember, oh, I'm thinking about all of them separately, whereas I'm thinking about all of them together. Okay, so there's one equation, we need another equation. What's our other equation? What do you think is happening to the delta L's of these? The delta L of the steel, is just equal to the delta L of the concrete, right? They're both compressing the same amount. So the force in the steel, the length of the steel over the E of the steel, 200. I, I'm actually gonna leave it as GPA for just a sec. Uh, 200 and then the pi by four, 18 squared and now I have all of these together so what is the area of all of them uh, there's four of them whereas if you had done this separately you would you would not have that four and you see how that four might just wash out so be consistent whatever you decide stick with it and do it your way um, but I'm thinking about all four of them together uh, equals the force in the concrete, the length of the concrete, the E of the concrete, 25 GPA, and the area of the concrete, it's 300 by 300, but some of that rebar is taking up some of that area. So minus pi by 4, 18, 4, so minus the area of the rebar. Okay, so do you see why I uh, could have changed the 200 to 200,000? I could have changed the 25 to 25,000, but if I was really smart, I would realize, you know, I'm, I'm just multiplying both sides of the equation by 1,000, so why not keep them smaller? <clears throat> the length, it didn't tell me the length, but does it matter? Just give it a length. I don't know, maybe it's 10 meters. It's, it's 10 for both of them. So those divide out on both sides of the equation. And so now we've got two equations, right? That green equation, that green, two equations, two unknowns. Uh, I'll do this math with you for a second. F, I would get F steel is 0.09151 F concrete. And then I would plug in that right there and get the force in the concrete is 732.9 kilonewtons. The force in the steel is 67.1 kilonewtons. So 
so this method, so it's really six, you know, 732,900 newtons is what I got. So it's kind of interesting, and this is how we can figure out how much of the force goes into the concrete, how much of the force goes into the steel. Okay, if we're applying with 800 kilonewton force, some of it is, is taken on by the steel, some of it's taken on by the concrete. It didn't ask the force in each of them, it asked for the stress. So let's make sure I answer. The stress in the concrete, 732, 9,000. Over the area of the concrete, uh, whatever that area is, 300, 900. Yep. All right. M divided by the area of the concrete. So that would be 8.24. MPA. And the stress in the steel, 67,100 newtons. But it's a much smaller area, pi by 4, 18 squared. Now, you stay consistent. You be consistent. This force was for all of them together. And so I've got a four right here. I'm dividing it by the area of all four of them together. This equals 65.9 MPA. So even though, uh, you know, I'm, a lot of the force goes to the concrete, the steel takes on more stress. And doesn't that make sense? And don't you think that the steel would stress more in order for it to compress, it's still stronger, it has a larger E. So in order for it to compress by just a millimeter or so, uh, it would need more stress right there. It didn't ask for it, but we could find the delta L, right? Once you know this, these forces right here, you could plug that in right here. Or you could plug this in right here, and we could get the delta L, the FL over EA of each of those sections. We know it's going to be the same.